So there once was a man named Paul. And Paul had a really good job and he made, you know, not like super wealthy money, but he made good money. He had a wife and they started a family. And, you know, eventually he had a son born. The son's name was Jacob. And Paul decided that, you know, he had worked his life to earn what he had. He didn't have much growing up. And he knew that when starting a family, he wanted to be able to provide for his son everything he never had. He wanted to give his son the best life he could possibly give and set him up for success in the future. So he determined, he, had, he was determined that from a young age, his son would want for nothing. And he spoiled him. He spoiled his wife, too. He, he did whatever he could. And a few years go by after his birth, and it gets to the point where Jacob is now old enough to understand the concept of a birthday and understand the concept of gifts. And so Paul goes to his son Jacob and says, Jacob, you know, you're turning five, and I wanted to ask you this, you know, I want to get you something special for your birthday. And so I want you to tell me what it is that you want for your birthday. What's If you could have one thing, what do you want? Now, normally when you ask a little child this, they just suddenly go, rattle off this list of things they want. They have trouble picking one thing, not Jacob. Jacob thought for a couple seconds, and then he just snapped his finger and said, Dad, the one thing I want is just pink ping pong balls. Paul looked at him and said, really? That... You just want some pink ping pong balls? Not, you know, this cool new toy or game console or a phone for some odd reason. Just pink ping pong balls. And Jacob said, yeah, dad, that's all I want. Just pink ping pong balls. So Paul said, okay, that's what you want. That's what I will get you. And the next day for his birthday, sure enough, Jacob comes downstairs and he has a box waiting for him. He rips it open and it is in a box full of pink ping pong balls, a thousand pink ping pong balls. And Jacob is elated, over the moon, excited. And he's like, oh, thank you, dad, thank you, dad, thank you, dad. This is the best thing ever. And he takes the box and runs upstairs. And, you know, then he goes about his day. And the next day, the pink ping pong balls are gone. Paul doesn't see him. He goes to wake Jacob for the school the next day, morning, doesn't see them. And he's very confused, but he decides not to ask anything because while wanting to also provide his son with everything that he might need for life, he also wants to make his son an independent person and let him be his own person, even at this young age. So he decides, you know what? If my son's not gonna say anything about these ping ping pong balls, I'm not gonna ask. If he wants to talk about it, he'll talk about it. And he lets it go. A year goes by. Jacob's birthday rolls around again, turning six. Paul again says, son, what do you want for your birthday this year? Jacob looks at him and says, Dad, you know, I would really just love to have some pink ping pong balls again. Jacob looked, or Jacob said that, and Paul looked at him and said, you sure? I mean, I got you that last year. Are you sure you don't want something different? Jacob says, no, Dad, just pink ping pong balls, please. So, next day, Paul, true to his word, wanted to provide for his son and give his son what he wants box of pink ping pong balls. Again, another thousand count box. Jake rips it open. Oh my God, Dad. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's so great. Goes to town, enjoys them. And then the next day again, gone. Pink ping pong balls, gone. And Paul is again, really confused and a little bit mystified and decides, you know, he peeks around a little bit, looks in Jake's room, doesn't want to peek into too much of his stuff. He just, are they in the corner here? Are they in the bed there? Did he shove them in the back of the closet? Did he shove them in the back of our closet? Nothing. Can't find them. So he's like, all right, fine. They're gone. And I'm not going to ask about it again. He's his own person. I want to keep an eye on him, but I'm not going to pry. So this goes on for years. Years upon years upon years. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Every year, Jacob asks for pink ping pong balls. Every year, Paul gives him a thousand pink ping pong balls. And the next day, they're gone. And not a word is ever said about it. And every year, Jacob is thrilled to receive them. And every year, Paul is happy to give them. And this goes on for some time until Jacob turns 16. Now, Paul knows, 16 years old, 
very special time for a kid. He's starting to be able to drive. He's starting to really get a taste or a, a, an itch for some independence. Get out from under the parent's wing. So Paul is ready. He's like, my kid's going to ask for a car. I know this. I'm ready for him. We got this. And he's got a plan in place. And he goes to Jacob and says, Jacob, you're turning 16. What would you like for your birthday, son? Jacob just smiles, this little wry smile. This has become a routine at this point. It's a ritual. He says, Dad, you know the drill. I love it. And I would really just love some pink ping pong balls. That's all I need, Dad. You provide me with everything else I could ever need. All I want are some pink ping pong balls. Paul looks at him and says, you got it, son. And walks away. Doesn't say a word. Now, the next day, Jacob comes down as part of the ritual and he looks for the box. The big box of a thousand count ping ping pong balls, but it's not there. Instead, there's a smaller box. Looks like it could hold maybe two or three. Now, Jacob doesn't bat an eye. He's not disappointed. He's not upset. He's not sad. If he got three pink ping pong balls, heck, if he got one pink ping pong ball, he'd be happy. So he takes the box. He's like, oh, thank you, Dad. This is great. And he opens it, and he has a mental hiccup. Because he opens the box and it doesn't have any ping ping balls, ping ping pong balls in it. And this is a bit strange because it has a key. And he looks at his dad and says, what's this? And dad goes, well, it's a key. Jacob says, okay, well, yeah, dad, I know it's a key, but what's it to? Paul says, why don't you go look out in the, in the driveway? So Jacob goes to the front door and he opens it and he looks out in the driveway and sure enough, there's a nice new sports car just sitting there, full to the brim, floor to roof, window to window, windshield to windshield, full of pink ping pong balls. Paul still delivered on what his son wanted, but gave him a little extra something on the side. Jacob is ecstatic. He runs to the car, opens it up, pink ping pong balls everywhere on the driveway. They just come pouring out. There's got to be three, four, five thousand just shoved in this car. And Jake is elated. He's ecstatic. He runs upstairs. He grabs a bag. He starts throwing ping ping pong balls in the bag. And he takes them all to his room. A bag at a time. His room is full of them. And then he just hops in the car. And he goes out tooling around. And goes and picks up some friends. Has a grand old time. Comes back the next. That, comes back that night. Tells his dad. Oh my god dad. Thank you so much. This is great. I love the car. I love the ping ping pong balls. Thank you so much. This is the best birthday ever. And Paul is just ear to ear. Beaming proud father smile like yeah I got it next day Paul goes to wake his son up for school knock 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 time to get up for school ping ping pong balls once again are gone and there were bags of these things in Jacob's room just bags and bags and bags and stacks and stacks and again three to four to five thousand ping ping pong balls gone Paul's really confused but he's made up his mind years ago just not going to ask about it. We just roll with it here. Don't worry about it. Jake, time to go to school. Jake goes to school. Now, that evening, Jake gets home, and he decides to go out on another little joy ride, show his car up to a few of his friends, and he's out for a while. And he's actually out much longer than Paul had expected. Now, again, Paul is raising his kid to be independent and to be self-sufficient. So he doesn't think much of it. If Jacob's gonna be out for too long, he usually gives a call. So he doesn't panic, he just sits and waits. But then his normal get home time passes by and it goes about an hour past, it goes about two hours past. And now Paul is getting a little concerned because this is very uncharacteristic of Jacob. Jacob's gonna be out for any length of time. He always calls just to say, hey, here's what's going on. Do you have a problem with this? All right, cool. Three hours passed. Now Paul's really starting to worry. And finally, three and a half hours past Jacob's normal curfew, if you will, the phone rings. And, you know, relief floods over. Paul's like, oh, okay, here's the phone. And surely something happened and he'll explain it. Picks up the phone and says, hey, how's it going? Because he assumes no one else calling at this time of night except my son. Except it's not his son. It's the police. And Paul takes the one phone call a parent never wants to hear. Sir, your child has been in a horrific car accident. We need you to come down to the hospital. He's alive, but he's not doing well. So Paul drops the phone and he gets in his car and he books it right down to the hospital and he gets there. The doctors intercept him and says, you know, he's in a horrible car accident. 
Somehow we think he swerved in oncoming traffic, got hit head on, and then deflected into a tree. Car is completely destroyed and he is in a bad way. We're talking internal bleeding, severe organ damage, several broken bones, a concussion, cracked skull, internal bleeding. It's bad. He's not gonna make it. There, all we can do for him right now is make him comfortable. There's so many injuries that there's nothing. We can't treat any of them and, and have it be successful. So if you wanna go in the room and spend some time with your son before he goes, room's right there. Um, we'll be outside if you need anything. And Paul just crestfallen walks into his son's room and he looks at the bed and there's, you know, he's hooked up to every machine possible. He's got tubes and wires coming out of him. The machines are beeping, whirring away in the background. And Paul just stands there for a minute and looks at his son, who's not really conscious, not really unconscious, but kind of in that midway state. And he just looks at him. And finally he walks over to his bedside and just sits down and gently reaches out and, and takes Paul takes Jacob's hand, just sits there and holds it for a while. And after a moment or two, he feels a gentle squeeze on the hand and he looks and Jacob's looking at him. Jacob has kind of come around, come out of the, the stupor of the, the painkillers that he's on and looks at him and is like, Dad, I'm so sorry. I, I wrecked the car. Paul's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's a car. It's a thing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And he just sits there and for another minute, no more words are spoken between them. They just sit there with each other until finally... Paul realizes if he's ever going to find out a thing that's been bugging him, he has to ask now. And so he gently shakes Jacob's hand to get his attention. And Jacob looks at him and says, Jacob, there's not much time left and there's not much left for us to say. You know how much I love you, how much I care about you. But I do have one question I want to ask real quick. Jacob says, anything, Dad, go ahead and ask. Paul looks at him and says, ever since you were five, I've asked you what you wanted for your birthday. And everything you the only thing you've ever told me is you want pink ping pong balls. And I've gotten them for you every year and I was happy to do it. And every year I get them for you and then the next day they're gone and I never see them again. And you never said anything about it. And I never really looked or pried or asked about it, but I was always curious what happened to them. And so if there is to be, if there's one thing I want to know before you are gone, before I lose you forever, I'd really like to know what happened to all those pink ping pong balls that I've gotten you over the years. It's just been, it's been driving me crazy for, for 11 years. Jacob looks at his father, smiles weakly and says, Dad, I've been meaning to talk to you about that and dies.